Hey, what's up, Zach here. And today I've got the Nike Precision 6, and this is a shoe I've gotten requested a lot in the comments. And there are some features of the Precision 6s that are akin to that of a flagship level Nike shoe. There's also some building and just kind of overall shaping of the shoe. It does remind me of some other older models that were flagship level line shoes as well, maybe in the basketball and tennis space. Um, and they do have some very niche use cases, which I think they might be the actual best shoe for out of Nike's entire lineup. So so let's see if they're a buy for you or not. Here we go. Now starting in the uppers of the Precision 6, one thing I noticed is the tongue is really padded. It is not gusseted or anything, it is just attached at the distal tip. However, you do get a decent amount of padding there, so it does feel pretty plush underfoot. Now you're also getting a padded mesh throughout the entire upper. Um, it, it doesn't breathe exceptionally well, it's not terrible either. If you look at the breathability test, heated up 164.2 degrees, cooled down another 77.6 degrees. So I, I think more it's that, that padding underneath of the mesh is a little bit dense, so it doesn't let go of heat all that well. The heat that was coming out of it was all coming out around the tongue, and we usually see that with tongues that aren't gusseted, that there's just really a huge air gap in there between the tongue as well as the lace line of the shoe. Now the lace line is a little bit narrow. It was actually a little more difficult to get the laces out of them because there's little narrow slits. It does have one outrigger here, and that does pull a little bit more of the fabric over your foot, so that is decent. Lockdown I thought was going to be a problem in these, however, it really wasn't. I, I thought I was going to get a ton of heel slippage in these, but the collar is just high enough to where, you know, as long as I lace them appropriately, um, I didn't have a problem even without a runner's knot. And if you look at the upper durability test, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, the bird does get through the first layer of the drag guard, but it does not even make an impression on the mesh padding underneath of it. Now, the one thing I will say is these do not have a lot of foxing on the uppers. There's not a lot of reinforcement there. So if you're looking for a super containing shoe, these really aren't it. They do allow a lot of degrees of freedom, a lot of movement, but there's also some advantages to that, which you know, we'll talk about. But getting into the midsole teardown, very pleasantly surprised a lot of budget level shoes do not have a rigid shank in them and these have a top loaded very stiff rigid shank which you can kind of feel on court too but um, I was you know that's still pleasantly surprised there was one under there. And the phylon in there, it, it is a pretty dense formulation of phylon. However, with that denser formulation, look at the single leg jump height test, 20.5 centimeters of single leg jump height on these, which is just as good as a lot of other flagship level shoes. And that's because number one, it's a super light shoe to get up off the ground. Number two, you get a stiff phylon set up with a very stiff shank, just easy just to pop up off the ground. Now I look at the bounce height test though, 27 centimeters in the heel and then 30 in the forefoot. That just shows it's not the most springy, lively foam underfoot however with an orthotic in those it does take it up a few notches which we'll talk about in the fit section but getting into my very favorite part of the precision sixes is their outsole tread now number one you're getting a huge outsole based flange which comes into a really steep peak here reminds me a lot of the nike zoom zero shape which was a flagship level tennis shoe a few years ago that some professionals are still playing it's kind of the same silhouette of shoe just much lighter of a shoe doesn't have all the bells and whistles on it but uh, the overall shape of the zoom zeros was that of a a lot of side to side stability, um, kind of the same things that Precision 6 has, a little bit more nimbleness underfoot, but as well as that kind of really nice, you know, stable feeling underneath the ball of your foot. The thing though that I think is the best part about Precision 6, which is kind of a Jekyll and Hyde, but I personally like it, is that the tread is flipped. Usually under the big toe joint is where you're getting the flatter rubber, the, the rubber that can withstand more force, more friction, and it's also that flat rubber so you can pivot on. On the Precision 6 is where you get the real chunky rubber underneath the big toe joint and the flat rubber underneath the lateral side of the foot. Now what this is gonna do is give you a ton of grip while the shoe is new and especially on indoor courts. If you were playing on carpet, either basketball, tennis, pickleball, volleyball, whatever, this is going to be probably one of the best gripping shoes out there. This might be the shoe of the year for carpet courts because this will give you such a good contact with the fibers of those courts right where you're gonna be pivoting down. So if you are playing on carpet, I would consider these especially at the price point. Now, if you look at the outsole durability test, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, the burr just rips right through the stuff. The durometer isn't the highest out there. So I, you know, it, on a rubberized court, they're gonna be okay. Indoor hardwood, they're gonna be like, okay, outdoor, asphalt and concrete, and these are just gonna start burning through pretty quick. So they are a little bit more of a niche market shoe, but if you're in that niche market, you are gonna get a flagship level grip and stability on those courts for a super budget price. Now also if you look at the speed ratio of them, coming at 2.26, and that's because like I said, the phylon isn't so, so lively. However, throw a little bit of a stiffer orthotic in there just to kind of give the shoe a little bit more cantilevering, a little more performance, and you've got a pretty lightweight shoe that can get off the blocks pretty quick and grab some of those 
those quartz like a carpeted court, even if it's like a sanded carpeted court. So like I said, the right surface underneath your foot and these things become elite. And getting into the fit of the Precision 6, you know, they fit like they look. They're a little more forgiving in the forefoot. Narrow, medium, wide width foot can go true to size. If you are a narrower foot, Actually, if it were me, I'd be going down a half size to get the weight reduction a little bit more, make them a little bit more of a performance shoe, a little bit more of a nimble shoe. And I would say if you are throwing a bulkier orthotic in there, if you're like a wide foot, you probably would want to go up a half size. However, that being said, the higher the size you go up, the more you might introduce some slipping issues on these. So I would try to go as true to size as you can with these. Like I said, a low profile orthotic in these can really kind of take them up a notch, especially for like little lumps and bumps or snake bites on your foot, heel pain, ball of foot pain. These aren't going to be the greatest things on earth for just because of the shock in there. However, because of the shank in them, in terms of arch strain or, you know, posterior tibial tinnitus, things like that, they are decent for it. And you can actually feel the foam underneath your arch of these. I was actually really surprised. You can actually feel a little bit of stoutness under there. So I'd say any, like shock inducing injuries, you need an orthotic in them. But for straining type injuries, for the weight of the shoe and the profile, they actually aren't bad. But in terms of the all-important playability of the Precision 6, like I said, they play a lot like the old Nike Zoom Zero, but in a much lighter version. I do think these are best for either basketball or pickleball, but with how nimble of a shoe it is and how easy this thing is to get step to step, especially going side to side, especially like short court type movements. If you are someone that wants a shoe for really quick footwork, whether it be in basketball or pickleball, this is, I, I think this is a great shoe for that, especially for like the pickleballer who might not burn through shoes as quick. In tennis, yeah, these would be okay. It's just you're going to burn through a hard hard court so quickly with that tread. They're going to be the best gripping shoes ever for a little while, but then they kind of fall off. And I think if you are a lighter player and aren't going to put as much force into the shoe, you will also get a lot more longevity out of these. But like I said, in terms of a shoe for nimble, quick footwork in a short containing space, especially on the right court, I think these are a buy for sure. But of course, I'd love to hear your opinion on these, especially because, like I said, there is a dividing line on these, especially like outdoor courts or people that, that are really burning through rubber or someone that really makes a lot of heat with their footwork. So, you know, like I said, they're not going to be for everybody, but they are going to be for some people. So I'd love to know if you are one of them in the comments down below. And if you want to see another pretty unique Nike basketball shoe, go on to the knife, the Nike Cosmic Unity 3. Make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam, and of course, carpeted basketball, tennis, and pickleball courts. See you in the next one.